Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ain't it good to be in the house of God today? Yeah. This time I want to welcome each and every person out to ATF today. And I want Brother Jackson Mills to come do our scripture reading. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Lord. In Matthew 9, verse 20 through 22, it says, And behold, a woman which was deceived with an issue of blood twelve years came be behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned, turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Each one of us have our own different problems, but the difference between us and our problems and her with her, hers is that she was desperate for her healing. If we all would have the desperate in our in our spirit to come to Jesus, throw our hands up and touch his garment, we can be made whole. Holy 
Father, you are holy. We have no one else like you.
to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it and it's all about you it's all about you that song, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Sometimes you have to go back to the beginning for where you found your first love in order to break through the situation that you're dealing with. Sometimes you just got to go back to the basics. Sometimes the basics are a whole lot better than it is where you're at. I don't know about you today, but I love God. God has bought, brought me through some things over this past year that I've been fighting with. And I still fight with some of it, Brother Mills. You know, ain't nobody perfect. But the one thing that I had to come to terms with is I had to get back to the basics. I had to get back to the heart of worship. Sister, if I can have you just sing just a little bit more of that. And I want each and every person in here just to close their eyes and just listen to the words. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And just pour your heart out to God. Let's go back to the basics.
It's all about you, Jesus. No matter what I face, it's all about you. Oh, glory God. Let's just close our eyes for a second and feel after God. Feel God's wanting to say something to somebody today. going through today. You're not alone. God said, I'm here. You just got to step out and believe. Step out in faith. Oh, glory God. God is good. At this time, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. If you got a need in your body, please step forward and these ministers will pray for you. Lord, we come before you today, God, and say thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Thank you for this presence that we feel in this place, Lord. God, I ask that you meet each and every need in this house, God. Oh, have your way today, Jesus. Have your way. Stretch your hands forth right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, I ask that you touch the need in this man's body, oh God. Oh, you are worthy, oh God. You are the great physician, oh God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. At this time, you can return back to your seat. I'm going to have the ushers come receive the tithes and offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for this, for this tithes and offering. Lord, we come before you today, God, to say thank you. Thank you just for today, God. Lord, I ask that you bless the, the offering today, God. Bless it more abundantly. Bless the ones that have to give today. In the name of Jesus, may come and give unto the Lord. Given. We've got a few announcements to make right now. So, uh, got a great report from our Celebrate Recovery class this past Thursday night at West Feliciana Parish Detention Center. Uh, we're so thankful for the prayer, time, and commitment and Brother McDaniel and Brother Garrett is putting in this ministry. <laughs> Special thanks to all who came out and helped yesterday at the, the church work day around the facilities, whether you did it yesterday or did it before yesterday or you came yesterday or you are scheduled to do it after you know, at a later date, it is greatly appreciated. Hey, that's what it says. The next sort of the word Zoom Bible study will be Monday night, 313 at 8 p.m., for more information, please see Pastor Mills. Our next, huh? Oh, my bad, 318. What did I say, 13? I'm sorry. I'm a week behind. Our next jail ministry service will be Tuesday, the 19th at 7 p.m. with myself and Brother Hoyt going to minister. Please keep this ministry in your prayers and pray that God will anoint me and Brother, Brother Hoyt. Reminder that our Easter service, 331, will be at 10.30 a.m. We only have one service that day. And at this time, we got Sister Amy Baggett to do a presentation.
This week is uh, Sister Amanda Sage Lee's birthday, and we just want to honor her by giving her a gift. Come on up. Praise the Lord. And at this time, we're going to have Sister Isabella come and sing us a special.
How many thankful for the love of God? I said, how many thankful for the love of God? Great God, Sister Isabella. Hallelujah. I tell you, great job. Y'all think that's good? You wait till my dream comes true of her daddy singing. How good it's going to be. Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking forward to that day because we'll be in that new building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't everybody in this place stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now? Now, why don't you add your voice to it and tell him how awesome he is. Come on, we love you, Lord. We worship you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Hallelujah. My message is not going to, I'm going to seem like I'm in left field from this service. But if you'll stick with me, we're going to switch it right smack in the middle of it. And I'll come right back to center field or right field, whatever you want to call it, because I can promise you. But God gave me this message. This was what he spoke to me last Sunday night when I was trying to go to sleep. And an uh, hour and a half later, uh, I finally drifted off to sleep and had to open up at the shop the next morning. And I was trying to make sure I didn't, Brother Nations, I was scared to death if I was going to lose that thought. And, uh, but uh, Monday while I was at the shop, I begin to, in between customers, I begin to put this together, and it is burning. Me and God's already, I've already preached it one time over there in that gym while I was praying, and uh, I tell you, the Holy Ghost was here, uh, already here today in this place. I tell you, there's been a great presence of God in this service. It was like this in the first service. From the first song, uh, the anointing I felt in the first message, and then in this second service, um, I'm sorry not to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Hallelujah. Well, Martin talked about that over the last months, whatever, it really has been fighting some things, going through some things. As a pastor, I know this. And during this time, he came to me on his own and said, I just want to step back from the platform. I just got to get, I'm not sinning. I'm not back. I just, I got to get my focus. I got to get, you know, this. I got to get back, you know, different bases, whatever. So I'll, I'll allow you to do it so much, and then I, uh, and then I, 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 at the same time, I'm going to push you. And he'll tell you, I'll push you. And I, there's times I was scheduling him. I said, uh, you're just going to do this. And he's like, brother, man, I didn't say I was ready to get back on the platform. Yet. I said, it don't matter. You don't do it anyway. <laughs> yes, sir. Because I know how the devil works. And I know the devil Wants to do his best. See, here's what we got to start realizing. God thinks way more of us than we think of our own self sometimes. And when God, in a one prayer meeting, God can take care of things. And he's expecting us to move forward. But if we don't watch it, we'll carry the baggage around over and over. And we're forgetting that his mercies is ocean deep. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So... I didn't know, we, we use a system called Planning Center uh, online and everything, and Brother Martin had been scheduled to, uh, probably for about a month now to leave this service, but he had never accepted it, and because uh, you can accept it, decline, whatever. So I was waiting for him to tell me that he wasn't going to leave service today, and I was going to tell him that he was, and, uh, but he didn't. And I watched as the glory of God begin to fill this house. And I watched as it began to move on him. And I watched it begin to move on every, I'm talking about there were so many people from the front to the back that there was just a prayer. See, sometimes we're shouting. Sometimes we're just weeping. Sometimes we're crying. Sometimes we're clapping. It, it don't matter. But the presence of God was so real in this place. And then I watched Brother Martin get up here and begin to say what he had to say about getting back to the basics. Getting back to the heart. And I told Brother Sagely, I said, this is not, I said, I'm preaching to the choir, Brother Sagely, when I tell you this. I said, but this is why, basically, I don't use a knee-jerk reaction on people. Yeah. Well, it's quiet in here, but I'm going to say it again. This is why I try to do like the Lord did, and I keep working with people. Yeah. Because, Brother Mills, 
I just tell them, sit down for that. That may be what pushes them off the cliff and out the back door because they may be going through the greatest trial of their life. But if you can say, you know what? Hold on to fight another day. Hold on. I'm not talking about allowing sin on the platform in the pulpit. I'm not talking about just Tim and it. I'm talking about sometimes people can go through some of the greatest trials. I'll never forget Brother Larry Booker, one of the most esteemed men in Pentecost, Bishop Booker. He had a lady that was literally doing things that she shouldn't have been on the platform for. He said, uh, I'm not going to say what it is, but she shouldn't have been on the platform. And for six months, he said, I went to take her off the platform. And the Lord told me I couldn't do it. Every time, no. And six months down the road, that lady, a message was preached. She hit the altar, and it completely changed her life. And see, she was a piano player, and she came to Brother Booker and said, I know you should have, but thank you for not doing it because that was my only lifeline. And I would come and I would play that piano. It was the only thing that kept me going. Ain't you thankful for the mercies of God and the grace of God? If I get, stand there on judgment day, I, I, I want to err on the side of mercy with people instead of erring on the side of, of, of others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, my message may not, uh, I'm going to get right into it. You don't have to stand. I'm not going to read in scripture right now. But uh, it, may not, it may not even make sense. Stick with me. Hallelujah. I know exactly where I'm going. I wrote the notes. Hallelujah. With the help of God. Hallelujah. There is one certainty in gambling. Nothing is left to chance. In the end, the house always, always comes out the winner. A casino is a business. Not a charitable organization throwing free money away. And like any other business, it has a business model in place designed to ensure its profitability. No matter what game you choose to play, the odds of the casino winning your money are greater than the odds of you winning the casino's money. That is because all casino games are designed to provide the house with a built-in edge diminishing the chances and the sizes of potential payouts. The house edge, which is the odds advantage in its favor, represents the average gross profit that the casino can reliably expect to make from each game. On the games with the lowest house edge, a casino might be generating a meager profit of anywhere from around a half of a percent to a bit over 2%. On other games, it will make profit of anywhere from 15% to 40%. Never experienced this personally, thank God. Thank God for Google. I just done some research. I, I, I don't have time to. I work too hard for my money to gamble with it. I, I just get tired of standing behind the people when I'm trying to pay for my chicken and biscuit or grits. I wait for them to get their lottery tickets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The house edge on an American roulette wheel will contain a double zero, which contains a double zero, is a five points. 26% chance that you have to win. For every one, or for the, it's the house is that, excuse me, for every one million that is bet at the roulette table in a casino, the management expects to pocket a profit of slightly more than $50,000. The other approximately $950,000 is returned to the betters. The casino, understand, is not aiming to bankrupt a player in one setting. It just makes, wants to make sure that in the long run, the player walks out with a little less money than they came in with, leaving the money in the casino's pocket. How do players lose more than they expect? Well, many players who are aware of the house edge still do not really grasp its implications for their bankrolls. They believe that roughly 5% edge that the house has at the roulette table means 
that they could reasonably expect to sit down with $100, gamble for a few hours, and the odds are they will only lose 5%. They fail to understand that the house edge applies not to their starting bankroll, but to the total amount that they wager. For example, assume a person is making $5 on every spin of the roulette wheel and the wheel spins 50 times an hour while that person is betting, be, be winning some bets and losing other bets. They are wagering $250 an hour. If the house edge plays out perfectly, at the end of four hours, they lose $50 or 5% of the 1,000, a amount 10 times greater than they expected. The longer you play, the greater the odds are that the results of the play will match up with the house edge. A player may be well ahead in the short term, but over the long haul, the house edge will eventually grind them down towards unprofitability. This is why casinos do all they can to keep you playing longer. For example, casinos are famous for not having clocks in them and for not having windows. They are designed in a way to keep players unaware of the passage of time. Many first-time players are presently surprised at being offered free drinks by the management. Those complimentary drinks will cost you. Though because of being intoxicated does not usually improve judgment when it comes to betting. So why, Brother Mills, why would people huh, gamble in the house if the house always wins? Well, people gamble for fun. And because there is a possibility, however, it is small of winning some money. Most bettors are aware that the house holds an edge. However, they often misunderstand just how big that edge actually is. Casinos are crafty, giving players just enough hope to keep them betting. Ultimately, the longer you bet, the bigger the house advantages becomes. There is one certainty when it comes to sin. Nothing is left to chance. In the end, the devil's house always comes out the winner. Second Corinthians 2 and 11 said, let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. First Peter 5 and 8 tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. You look in the message, it says, a version, it says, keep a cool head, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. We look in Hebrews 11 and 24 through 27. It said, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the righteous, or excuse me, with the people of God, than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook. Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endeared as seeing him who is invisible. There was a man in the Bible who's in the Old Testament was my favorite Bible character by the name of David. David come to a place that he come close. I know that he walked away from God another time. But this was a time that I believe that David thought about walking away from God. The Bible said in Psalms 73 and 1, he said, truly God is good to Israel, even 
to such are of a clean heart. David was saying no doubt about it. God is good. He is good to good people. He is good to the good hearted. He said, but for as for me, David said, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well and I slipped. David said, I nearly missed it. I nearly missed seeing the goodness of God. I nearly missed seeing the mercies of God. Why? He said, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no hands, bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not troubled as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. David said, I was looking the other way, and I was looking up to the people at the top, it seemed like. I was envying the, the wicked who had, had it, seemed like they had it made, and I was coming to church on Sunday and they were going they were going fishing on Sunday. I was coming to church on Sunday and they were going to the ball games on Sunday. I was coming to church on Sunday and they were doing whatever they wanted to do, their pleasure. And David said, I couldn't understand it. Here I am trying to do the right thing. I'm paying my tithes. I'm giving. I'm putting God first. And it seems like the more I do, the harder that it gets. But when I look at the wicked, it seems like they're prospering. It seems like they ain't got a care in the whole wide world world. Uh, hallelujah. Then David says in the sixth verse, uh, therefore pride uh, compasses them uh, as a chain. Uh, violence covers them uh, as a garment. Uh, he said they got arrogance about them. Uh, they wear the latest fashions uh, in violence. Uh, he said their eyes stand out with fatness. Uh, they have more uh, than heart could wish. Uh, he said they're pampered. Uh, he said they're overfed. Uh, they're decked out in silk bowls uh, of silliness. And he moves on and he said, they are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lofty. They set their mouth against the heavens. And their tongue walketh through the earth. He said, they jeer. They use words to kill. They bully their way with words. They're full of hot air. Their loud mouth disturbing the peace. And David said in the 10th verse, therefore his people returned thither, hither, and our waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. David is saying people actually listen to them. Can you believe it? Like thirsty puppies, they lap up their words. Hallelujah. In the 11th verse, David said, and they said, how? David said, how? Does God know? Is there not knowledge in the most high? Let me break it down to you. David said, what's going on here? Is God out to lunch? Is God on vacation? Is nobody tended to the store? Where's God at with all this going on? He moves on in the 12th verse and he said, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. David said the wicked get by with everything. They have it made. They're piling up riches. Fairly I have cleansed my heart in vain. And I have washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long, David said, have I been plagued and chastened every morning? This is what David was saying. This is what how every one of us can have had felt at one time or another. Have I been stupid to play by the rules? Because what has it gotten me? It's got me nothing but a long run of bad luck. But but what? It's just a slap in the face every time I walk out the door. David moves on in the 15th verse and he says, If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generations of my children. When I thought to know this, it was too pain for me. David said if I had given in and talked like this I would have betrayed your children. Still when I tried to figure it all out, all I got was basically a headache. But then David said, until I went and to the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Until I entered into God's house. 
Then I saw the whole picture. He said, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casteth them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. Hallelujah. As a dream when one awaketh. So Lord when thou awakest. Thou shalt despise their image. He said you put them on a slippery road. And on that slippery road you put them on. It's going to be a final crash. And a ditch of delusion. In the blink of an eye. It's going to be a blind curve in the dark. It's going to become a nightmare to them. When they wake up, they're going to rub their eyes. It is going to be nothing. There's nothing to them. And there never was. Thus my heart was grieved. And I pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, David said. So ignorant I was as a beast before thee. I was bitter. I was totally consumed by envy. I was totally ignorant. I was a dumb ox in your presence is what he was saying here. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. David said, I'm still in your presence. But now you've taken me by your hand. <laughs> I'm still in your presence. But what's different now uh, is you stretched down and you took me. Uh, you wisely, uh, you tenderly have led me. Uh, and then you have blessed me. Uh, he moves on to the 25th verse and he said, Whom have I in heaven but thee? <laughs> but there is none upon earth uh, that I desire besides thee, O God. Uh, you're all I want in heaven. Uh, you're all I want on earth, God. Uh, you're a God. If I could just get in your presence. Oh, your love is ocean deep. You're all that I want to be. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. David said, when my skin sags and my bones get brittle, God is rock firm. God is faithful. He said, for lo, they are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all of them that go a horn from thee. Look, those who left you are falling apart. They're deserters. They'll never be heard from again. He said, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all of thy words. But I he said, I'm in your presence, God. And how refreshing it is to me. I made Lord God. I made you my home. I'm telling the world what you do, oh Lord. Yes, I'm here to tell you that the house always wins. You better make sure you're in the right house. You better make sure you're in the right place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, <laughs> let me go into the house of the Lord. David said, when they said, let us go into the house of God, my heart leaped for joy. Isaiah 54 and 14, the prophet said in righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression for thou shalt not fear and from terror for it shall not come near thee. The, the prophet said that we will be built on solid ground. We will be grounded in righteousness. Far from any trouble. Nothing to fear. Far from terror. It won't even come close. He said, behold in the 15th verse, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. If anyone attacks you, the prophet is saying, don't for a moment suppose He's saying that God is letting you know that I've sent them. And if anyone shall attack, nothing will come of it. Behold, I have created the smith, or should I say the blacksmith, that bloweth the coals in the fire, 
that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. He said, God has said, I've created a blacksmith who fires up his forge and makes a weapon designed to kill. But then he moves forward for the scripture we used last Sunday. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. I've created the destroyer, but I also will let you know there's not a weapon that he can form that can hurt you. It cannot be done. Matthew 16 and 18. We find Peter with the rest of the disciples and the Lord is telling them, Peter, upon this rock, upon this revelation, of who I am. See, right there at that very moment, Peter began to get a revelation of who Jesus was. <laughs> he was just not the Son of God. He was God. <laughs> he was God manifested in the flesh. <laughs> he was not a God. <laughs> he was the God. <laughs> he was not just a Jehovah. He was the Jehovah. He's not just I am, I am that I am. <laughs> I am the first. <laughs> I am the last. <laughs> and besides me, there are no others. get a revelation you can't do anything in my name without you without me you can do nothing hallelujah but with me but I don't want to do anything or excuse me I refuse to do anything without you because you are I, I am the vine and you are the branches so we get the two together and God said whatever you ask whatever you touch on whatever you agree on in my name I'm going to be in the midst you see there's something about calling on the name of Jesus demons tremble at the mention of the name of Jesus. They don't tremble at my name. They don't tremble at your name. But they tremble at the name of Jesus. My God. Some of y'all are riding with me. And some of y'all, y'all don't tremble at the name of Jesus or the name of the devil. Hallelujah. But I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this revelation, let me break it down to you a little bit more. Once you get a revelation of who he is, it don't matter what the devil says. It don't matter what the doctor says. It don't matter what the employer says. It don't matter what the banker says. It don't matter who, it don't matter what the family members say. Once you get a revelation of Jesus, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Not might, I shall not, it will not prevail against it. Come to the music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now they're coming to the music, but we fit to have church now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hungry, Brother Mills. You had time to have two meals before you come to church today. Hallelujah. I know because I've already had two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to have some church in this place now. You see, there's times I come into this place and I'm broken down, I'm discouraged, I may be smiling on the outside, but I ain't smiling on the inside. The reason that he can say come on is I usually vent to him, all right? And he has to hear it and say it'll be all right, brother, don't worry about it, all right? And, and, and then I had to get it out and just move on. I'm not talking about venting at you, I'm talking about venting at the devil. I get mad at the devil. I don't get mad at people. I get mad at spirits of hell that would try to rise up again. See, when I see the enemy holding you back, and I realize what God wants to do for you, when I, when I, you, you, your father is just waiting on you to say, I need you, Lord. I need that mercy. I need that grace. I need that anointing. All he says, if you ask, it shall be given unto thee. If you seek, you shall find. If you are not, it'll be open unto thee. 
So I come in here sometime, Brother Sage. Get into a pre-service prayer. Sometimes it's popping. Sometimes it's not. But that don't mean God ain't popping. Okay? And we start getting lost in the press. I encourage you. Over the next 30 days, quit worrying about if somebody else is praying or not and just pray yourself. Okay? That's what I had to start doing. Hallelujah. It, because I'm not praying to them, but they're not praying to me. I'm praying to him. All right? So if I can make a connection, we can have a move of God for me. All right? So I walk in here. Lights come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor standing on the platform, wondering where so-and-so's at, and wondering what's going on, wondering if they're discouraged. But then something begins to happen. Something begins to shift. Hallelujah. We're at the end of that little countdown deal. And it's flowing. I said it's flowing. Hallelujah. In this place. And something begins to happen. And the moving of the Holy Ghost begins to happen in this place. I'm just telling you what happens. You said, Brother Mills, what is getting ready to happen? Well, I'm just telling you what's going to happen. It goes just like this song. If you walk in sick, you're going to walk going to walk out healed. If you walked in bound, you're going to walk out free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you, yeah, if you walked in sick, that's why I got to get to church. I'm going to walk out healed. I'm bound, but I can walk out delivered. I can walk out set free. Why? Just a mention of his name. Just a mention. Everything changes when I begin to mention his name. If you walk in heavy, you don't know, walk out light. That ain't talking about weight loss either because I already tried it. Hallelujah. But it's talking about spiritual burdens. If you walked in weary, you're going to be all right. I'm going to say it again. If you walked in heavy, you're going to walk out light. If you walked in weary, you're going to be all right. Why? Just the mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. Everything changed by the mention of his name. If you walked in down, you're going to walk out up. If you walked in empty, He's going to fill your cup. Say it again. If you walked in down, you're going to walk out up. If I didn't have these slick pair of shoes on, I'd jump on that pulpit right now. If you walked in empty, he's going to fill your cup. It's just a mention of his name. I said it's just a mention of his name. When I mention his name, everything begins to change. Everything begins to change. Oh, if you walked in broken, you're gonna walk out whole. If you walked in lost, he's gonna save your soul. Just a mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. When I begin to mention his name, everything begins to change. I said everything begins to change. Why does it change? Because his name is Jesus. I said because his name is Jesus. I said because his name is, oh, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus, that's the name we praise. Oh, Jesus, that's the name we lift it high. Oh, the mighty name, the name is Jesus. It's a mighty name. It's not the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but it's all these three wrapped up in one. Here's no other name given among men whereby ye must be saved. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The house always wins. 
Anybody got a clue what I'm getting ready to have them sing? Hallelujah. It's only about the third time in 10 years that I've told them what to sing. But I knew when you were at the shop, Sister Courtney, I was having that slow moment after the morning rush from the shop. And I was back there in that back room speaking in tongues, crying. And I just, why? Why would you, why would you do it? Because I just started mentioning his name. I started mentioning his name. I'm here to tell you right now, if you walked in and you need a healing in this place today, you're in the right place at the right time. Because we're going to call on the name of Jesus. If you walked in broken, I'm telling you, you're in the right place. If you walked in lost, uh, you're at the right place. Uh, if you walked in uh, and you need to be made whole, you're in the right place. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord right now. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. If you need it today, just move out and respond and watch what happens. Sing it. If you walked in sick, oh yeah, you're gonna walk out here. Oh yeah. If you walked in down, yeah, you're walk out free. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his Just name. Just a mention of his name. Yeah. Just a mention of his name. Everything can change. Everything oh, listen. Can change. If you walked in sick, if you're sick, you're gonna walk down here. If you'll come up here, I'll lay if hands on you. you got the word of the Lord say, you'll be made whole. The mention of His name, 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 the mention of His name. Go ahead, everything can change. If you walked in. big of a God we got. We don't have to say, God, this person needs healing. This person needs a financial blessing. This person's got a lost loved one. This per We just say, we got an issue. We got a need. So if you're one of those individuals, I felt to do this to the Holy Ghost just now. I want as they begin to sing it again, you to lift both of your hands in the air. And Brother Martin, come here. I felt to do this. Brother Martin, I'm gonna tell you one thing to say over them. You just speak the name Jesus over them. And God's gonna do the rest. It's all it takes, Brother Nations. It's all it takes. 
Shiver go and have I not, but such as I have, give out of thee. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He told him, rise up and walk. Go ahead, sing it. If you need prayer, lift your hands right now. If you walk in, go ahead. If you walk down, if you walk in, if you walk in, if you walk down, just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. commitments to God. You said, I'm going to try, God, just see if this thing will work. Am I telling you the truth? Just, I, I'm going to give. I'm going to do what I can do, and I'm just going to see what happens here. Lord, just show me. I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe people you know may not be people to know. Get your dump trucks ready. Get your dirt equipment ready. He's going to send it in places that you know not of. But the work orders are already ready. They're just getting ready to call you to fulfill them. You believe what I say? I'm only going to ask you to say one thing. 
and say, I'm going to pray over you. I just felt led to do it. It makes them strange. But I want you to say that name Jesus. That name Jesus. Woo! <laughs> just the mention of his name. Lift your hands, Donald. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to confirm it. it if you want Even to this day, God. Let it be heaven. Let it go. Let it go. Open up the windows of heaven, God. Open up the windows of heaven, God. Do it, Holy Ghost. 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 you just to lift your hands across this place right now and I just want you to begin to call on that name right now <laughs> Jesus thou son of David <laughs> Jesus thou son of David <laughs> oh I love you Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord Thank you, God. Give him a hand clap of praise right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. What an awesome present. Thank you for your response to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is so good to have Sister Sagely, some of her family here with us today. We're so glad y'all are here. Hallelujah. And each and every other person that's here today, if you see somebody, you miss them, reach out to them. Let them know that they were missed. And then uh, we miss Elder Mills. He's preaching uh, the second service. Uh, he was here first service, but uh, he's preaching uh, for Brother Hopkins tonight in Ponchatoula. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands. Be friends.